Achalon Chigozi Destiny. I'm from Imo State, Oweri North precisely. Yeah, I'm the third child of um, my parents. We're actually four, three, three guys and um, one girl. I, my educational background, I, I went to school here in Lagos, my primary school in Lagos, secondary school in Lagos. Um, I went to Lagos State University. I graduated 2016, so um, my course, I actually did uh, zoology and environmental biology. Uh, music is, is like my family thing, you know. Um, it's inborn. I, I believe uh, I, I didn't just stumble into it. It's something that God gave. It's a gift and it's a talent. So um, I've always known that I was going to do music right from uh, my very young age because I started playing drum. I started playing, playing the drums at the age of, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, seven or eight years. Yeah, school drums, you know, when you're young, you. You play the school drums, and the beautiful thing is that uh, then, when when I even graduated from my primary school, they will still call me back to come play the drums for them. So on and on like that, I started playing in church. Uh, from church, I saw that oh, this this is something that I would love to do. Then like that, like that, I developed interest in other instruments. I started playing the bass, guitar, a little. Then I moved to the piano. Then after some time, I had a saxophone, so I started playing the sax, on and on like that. So I already knew that, oh, this is what I want to do. But you know, the normal Nigerian parents, they want you to either, you know, study medicine, um, engineering law or whatever. So actually, I wanted to study medicine, but I wasn't offered medicine. So, but I knew what I wanted to do. So after doing the uh, four years program, and probably before that time, I was also doing music somehow, somehow, you know. But after that program, I realized that, yes, this is what I want to do. So I, I proceeded to um, study music, where I did a two years program in Peter King's College of Music. Yes, that's, um, then I went to do a program in it. And um, we want to thank God for where we are at the moment right now. So that's why music is the thing for me. I would say, I used to, okay, I used to belong to a group of um, persons before. So I, my, my, at that point I realized that I could, I had this gift of composition. I had this, I, you know, it's embedded in me. And it's one thing that, yes, all of them all knew that, ah, okay, this guy has this gift of um, composition. So it's been like, uh, I don't want to just, let, let me say, it's been like eight years or nine years down the line now that I realized, but it became real to me in, um, let me say some five years ago, it became real to me because then I could just sleep, you know, wake up and um, start singing, uh, or maybe probably I'm just seated somewhere and I'll just hear it and um, just write it down or probably just record it on my phone. So some five years ago, yes. Uh, okay, um, they should be like 15, 20. I will first of all say thank you for everything. You know, thank you for everything is, um, it's a mystery to me. Um, sometime this year, I think in January 31st, I was coming back from a church service. Um, I think it was around 9.30 at night. So I, uh, I was almost close to my bus stop, but a car hit me. I don't know, I can't really remember. Was it a car or a keke or something? I knew something actually hit me. Then I was lifeless on the ground. You know, as, as, as I sat to 10, 
But the good thing, or uh, what God did for me, was um, God sent five policemen to come rescue me. And we know the typical Nigerian policemen will not, um, you know. But God sent them to, you know, come. And then they took me with their police van to a hospital. And you know the beautiful thing? They took me to my hospital, like the hospital that I use. And um, immediately the doctor and the nurses saw me. They were like, this guy is somebody that we know. This is our patient. Like, this guy is our patient. So they quickly attended to me. Now, they began attending to me. I didn't know what was happening because I was just, um, I, you know, I was in the other way. Now, they, they were attending to me. All of a sudden, after, I think, 20, 25 minutes, according to them, I just lifted my hand, my left hand, and I just said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything. That was what came out from my mouth. Then immediately, the, the policemen were like, this must be a miracle. I was like, ah, what's happening here? What's happening? And I was on a suit. You know, they had removed my suit. You know, they were like, ha, can you see me? I said, yes, I can see you. They were like, can you, can you hear me? I said, yes, I can hear you. Then they were like, am I sure? I said, yes, I can hear you now. That I can hear you. I can see you. They were like, this must be a miracle. I was like, oh, what's, what happened? Then they, they explained to me that some guys hit me. They robbed me. They took my phone, they took my wallet and all. I was like, I don't know what happened. Then they said I should call my, can I call anybody? Can I recognize them? I said, you're just five. And I counted one, two, three, four, five. You guys are five here. They're like, ah, this must be a miracle. So at that point, I knew that, ah, this is just God. This can only be God. And you know the beautiful thing? They went in search for my phone. They got my phone back. They got my wallet back. The money was intact. And one thing that really struck my mind was that there was a guy who was at the bus stop. This same guy went to meet them and asked the guys that were with my that robbed me that they should give me back my phone, give me back my wallet. They were like, who be this one? And the guy put his hand in their car or whatever and took my phone and took my wallet. So they were looking at him and he said something that he knows that this guy that was hit by this car will come back alive to take his phone and his wallet. So that was what happened. Then after that day, I went to church. The, God told me, okay, go to church and stay for the night. So I stayed at night. I stayed throughout the night there. Then in my prayer time, I was just praying. Then I connected with um, Pastor Nat's um, Hallelujah Challenge. Then after that night, I was just singing, thank you for everything. So I was like, ah, thank you for everything. I just went and I took the piano. That was where the thank you for everything song came to reality. So uh, it's just the encounter that I had that brought that, um, that brought that song. So that's just it. That's the, the whole thing about the thank you for everything. Thank you for the light. All right. Um, the testimonies have been great. And we want to bless God for the testimonies, you know. Um, some people will just write me. Uh, I, I think I remember one. There was a lady, she said that um, she's not been able to sleep for some days, that she was just forced to come for that program. And um, immediately after the thank you for everything song and all, that she went home and she, she could sleep, that she found peace, that has just won. There was a lady that came from Abuja for the program. She had not been going to church for some time, but she just had this urge to come for that program. And she has been doing the online church thing. But after the program, she said she almost missed her, that she even missed her flight. She was crying that, oh Lord, I don't have money for this. Lord, if truly you are the Lord that we thanked yesterday, please, can you just prove yourself mighty? And she said immediately the, the attendant just looked at her and said, Oh, you, can you just come? Uh, don't worry, you won't pay for anything. Just, we'll put you on another flight and you'll find your way to Abuja. Because she was supposed to go for a program there. And she said she could just only remember, thank you for everything. There was another, um, another lady who sent her testimonies. She said um, that in her place of work, she has been struggling with meeting up her target. But she thanked God for her job. 
at, as at the time we're saying, okay, can you just thank God for whatever you want to thank God for? She was just thanking God for her job. And she said in, the, in that, do, that week, she resumed work, that she met her target, she, over, she, she surpassed her target, that people were even asking her, how did you do it? What happened? She just said, the mystery is just thank you for everything. So a series of testimonies, even I myself, uh, my life has not been the same after that program. I've been receiving messages from people, calls, and people's life have just been blessed. People have been blessed. Um, series of testimonies, I can't just recall all of them at the moment right now, but we just return all the glory to God. Thank you for the God. One thing that um, the Lord has actually told me specifically to bring to the mind of people, thanksgiving. Um, many people think what happened to them is their birthright, but they've actually forgotten that um, it's, not their, it's not their doing. If God doesn't permit things to happen, it won't happen. You know, there was something that I told a friend of mine. I said, uh, yeah, God actually told me. Then I told him, I said, um, the most ungrateful being on earth are human beings because human beings don't see the need to thank God for what God has done for them. One of such cases is that um, some of us actually complain that um, maybe your neighbor has a, a car and is going to work and um, he didn't give you a lift to the bus stop, but you have forgotten to thank God that you have two legs that can take you to the bus stop to get a car, you know? So these little things are very important. So human beings don't really see it as a, 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 they don't really see it that this is what they really must do or should do. So it's something that I believe when human beings begin to think of the faithfulness of God, you will come to the realization that thanksgiving is the utmost thing. And there's, this is just my philosophy. I believe that um, before you ask, it's even in the Bible, thank him. So it's more important to thank him than to ask him. Thank you for you, you, uh, For me, I get inspired and also get revelations. So now, one way I get inspiration is um, I love to be alone. If I am alone, I think of the faithfulness of God. I think of the things he has done. Two, if I hear sound, once I am able to hear sound, like, you know, there are some kind of sounds that you hear that, you know, they'll propel your spirit man. I also receive it in the toilet. Sometimes I could just be sitting down and I'll just hear it. And sometimes, more importantly, is when I pray. That is very key for me. When I pray extensively or when I worship, yeah, Sometimes I just worship God, and in my place of worshiping God, I hear new songs. I just, my phones are always very close to me. So once I hear the new sound, I just get my phones and I record them. So once I'm worshiping, or once I'm praying, or once I'm alone, or once I'm playing the piano or something, I get songs. I, I'm, not, um, I'm not the kind of person that receives songs like... Uh, I know I don't I, I take my time to to receiving those songs and um, another thing is um, yes when I sleep there's a there's a portion of the Bible that says in Job chapter 35 verse 10 the Lord gives us songs at night so uh, those songs come at night sometimes and one place is uh, okay it's my secret actually but I'm going to say it one place is in the church you know sometimes I'm always in the church. I could just sit down. Sometimes people will ask me, why are you not going home? They don't know why I'm not going home. It's my secret place. You must have your secret place if you want to get songs. You know, some people in the secular, you know, some of them have their secret place. So, so we too must have our own secret place. So it's, when I sit down in the church, when everybody had all gone home, or at night, I just take out my time in the church, and that's where I get my inspiration from. word of advice okay to come in five folds because that has really helped me one is to 
believe in what God has given you. Two, trust God. There's always a seed time and there's always a harvest time. Um, number three is that um, you must, you, you, there's, there's this book that says talent is not enough. So you, you must believe that uh, your talent is not enough. You must shape it. You must, you must, you, you, whatever you need to do to make it better. Uh, I take my, uh, I always like um, David. David was a skillful man. That for him to be skillful means that he knows the craft. So, and um, he he's, uh, was actually spiritual too. So you must believe in God. You must believe in your word. You must believe in your gift and talent and you must shape it. And number four, you must trust the process. And number five is that there's no room to giving up. You can't give up because uh, it's, it's what you are called to do. And you must be patient. You can't give up. You cannot just give up because you've gone too far from where you started from. So you can't give up. That's just it. <laughs> Okay, um, ever since I realized the, I had the understanding of Thanksgiving, I've stopped complaining. Now, Nigeria is a great nation, and it's going to be great. So uh, the present state of Nigeria may look so bad and all, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, the tunnel signifies darkness. You may not clearly see what is ahead of you, but once you continue at it, there's, there's a light at the end. So I know Nigeria has a light. The light is just very close. In turn, I believe and I know that um, it's going to be great. That's why I always say thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for the election because we know it's going to be great. Thank you for 2023. Thank you for safety. Thank you for, for everything. So there is hope. And I know that Nigeria will all rejoice because Nigeria is going to be a nation that the whole world will envy shortly from now. So there is, there's, there is always reasons to thank God for Nigeria. There will always be and there should always be. So your prayer for Nigeria? Uh, my prayer for Nigeria is that um, I still thank you for Nigeria. Lord, I thank you for Nigeria because it's the place I, was, uh, it's the place I, am, I, I am right now. I was born here. I'm still here. And I'll still be here because I know and I believe, Lord, that um, it's going to be a, a great nation and we'll live to testify of your goodness. That's my prayer for Nigeria. It's a great nation. Thank you for the sun. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the light. Thank you for the dark times. Thank you for everything. Thank you for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thank you for Thursday. Thank you for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thank you for every day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for every 